Hello, everyone. Today's topic, we are going to discuss about the scale-agile framework, different configurations, how we can start with the actual implementation, and what is all required for the essential implementation perspective. As you can see on the screen, uh, we launched already the scaleagileframework.com. By default, when we launch the framework, the portfolio configuration is the one which will be loaded default. So let's go through the essential configuration today in this topic. And we will discuss about the large solution portfolio and the full configuration in the subsequent topics. When we go to the essential, let me zoom in so that it will be easy to view. When we go to the essential configuration, as the definition says, it is the most basic configuration of the framework and it provides some minimal elements necessary to be successful with SAFE. So any implementation when it comes to the Agile, we will be talking about a product backlog as well as a team backlog. And each, there could be a number of stories in the product backlog where each team will be taking up the prioritized set of user stories and make use of it and implement it in the given two week, three week sprint timelines. Subsequently, the teams will be picking up the next set of user stories and they will be doing the incremental iterative delivery. The same is the approach recommended or suggested by the Scale Agile as well. As a first step, we will be identifying one of the Agile daily strength where we'll be working on one common solution or one common implementation. We'll talk about what is the Agile daily strength is all about. Right? So once the one successful Agile daily strength is launched and implemented and we gather the feedback from the implementation perspective, that's when the next release lines will be launched, will be prepared for the launching and will be taken for the execution and the implementation towards the transformation at the organization level. So from that perspective, when we talk about the one single agile release line as a first step, we'll be focusing on the essential release, essential configuration. Within that, if we take a look at the framework, everything is defined in detail in this framework. One thing is like we need to understand how to connect the dots or how to read the framework from the end-to-end -end perspective and how we can infer, how we can understand it and how we can take it to the actual implementation at our organizations. To start with the left-hand side, we have all the roles required will be from the essential configuration perspective from the one agile really strength perspective. If we start taking a look, we have the Agile teams, which includes the product owner and Scrum Master as well. So most of us are already aware of the Agile teams concept where we have two specialized roles, Scrum Master and product owner, as well as the team members who work on the implementation at the team level. The same way we have multiple Agile teams coming together, working together in the form of an Agile release strength. That is the composition of the com uh, definition of an Agile release strength. Whereas, the main intention of this Agile relation is all the teams should be working on one common solution, one common implementation, or one common product backlog. There is a main intention, or there is a main purpose how the Agile relation will be identified and launched uh, to the implementation perspective. Then, once we have the Agile release strength, sorry, once we have the Agile teams, we will be having some additional roles which are identified at the release train level. The RTE, release train engineer, who will be acting as like a chief scrum master for the release train. When you say the chief scrum master of the release train, what is his responsibilities from the RTE role perspective is, they, he will be facilitating, coordinating, mentoring, coaching, training, and making sure the release train is progressing as per the plan. Then comes the product management, where it could be one or many individuals who work together to identify, define the requirements from the end user perspective, which are to be prioritized, to be defined, and to be implemented and released to the production. The product management works very closely with the product owners at the team level. We will discuss more on the product management and product owner in a subsequent discussion. Then comes the system architect or the engineer. So who will be helping the teams of the Agile release train 
from the design, from the architecture, from the implementation perspective. Right. So not every team, not every release line might be requiring to have a dedicated system architect or system engineer. So that's where this role is not defined at the team level, whereas it is defined at the release train level, which will help from the implementation perspective. Then we have the business owners, which is a key critical role from the agile release train successful implementation. The business owners are the one who will be getting the budget approval, the allocations, the initiatives defined, mapped at the and prioritized at the organization level and will be mapped to the release trains where we'll be working on the actual implementation. So these are all the different roles coming together at the Agile release train. And coming back to the Agile teams, the teams will be including the team members from the, both the business and the technology perspective, who is required to help the teams implement the solution. Once we move to the bit right, we have the uh, Scrum as well as XP as well as Kanban minister here. What does it mean? When we say the Agile teams are part of the uh, Agile release train, the teams have the flexibility or the opportunity or the option to pick and choose which of these concepts they would like to make uh, and they would like to make use and the, uh, from the release train implementation perspective, which means the teams could be using Scrum, the teams could be using Kanban, or the teams could be using Scrum along with XP and making sure to focus on the quality practices as well. So it is up to the teams how or what they want to do it. At the release train level, all the teams should be focused on coming up with a common cadence, common timelines and focus on the continuous integration. Then moving a step above, we have the customer centricity and design thinking. What is the customer centricity? As part of the version five from the scale agile, they defined or they brought in this concept of customer centricity and design thinking. What does it mean by the customer centricity is all from making the customer in the center from the implementation perspective. And the customer is not just from the defining the requirements and coming at the end of the demo perspective. No, that's not the intention. The whole focus of the whole implementation at the organization level is built around the customer by keeping the customer in the center or in the focus. That's the reason the customer centricity is defined as a concept and customer centricity helps the organizations to understand what is the expectations of the end users? What are the problems, the issues, challenges the customers are facing and what could be the beneficial solutions or the functionalities or the implementation which can help the customers from us as an organization perspective. There is a reason customer centricity is designed as a key concept and the version five of the scale ledger. Then how we can do this customer centricity is there are different design thinking tools, design thinking techniques, which are defined, which are mentioned as a reference from scale ledger implementation perspective. There are like personas, empathy maps, customer journey maps, user story mapping, and all different concepts, different techniques, which can help us as an organization to understand the end user perspective from bringing in the customer centricity concept into the implementation. That is the reason the design thinking is also defined as a key concept from the version five of the scale agile frame. Moving ahead, we have the program backlog. Uh, before going into the program backlog here, if you see the program, Kanban is defined. So the program backlog or the common term product backlog from the regular implementation will be coming as part of the program Kanban. Why or what is the program Kanban? Program Kanban is the one to bring in the focus of the visualization as well as setting up the BIP limits rather than keeping too many features, too many functionalities in progress at any given point of time. The concept of the program Kanban is indirectly highlighting us as an organization to limit the number of features in progress at any point of time and making sure to complete the implementation and take the next set of features from the implementation. Once the features are defined in the program Kanban, it will be brought into the program backlog during the PI planning or before the PI planning how the features will be brought into the PA planning by making use of the 
prioritization technique called as weighted shortest job first. In short form, we call it as WSJF, WSJF. There are different prioritization techniques like Moscow, Can, Cano, Rice, different prioritization techniques, which we can make use of it. Still, we can go ahead and make use of it. Whereas WSJF, weighted shortest job first, is a explicit prioritization technique, which is defined and recommended or suggested by scale the child. So if in case we are making use of the same implementation, it is suggested to think or look into how we can bring in this BGF prioritization technique from the feature prioritization perspective. Once the features are prioritized in the program Kanban, that will be brought into the program backlog and will be taken into the teams into the as in the form of agile release time into the PI plan. PI planning is like program increment planning. What is a program increment? It is a combination of five to six sprints club together. We call it as a program increment. So indirectly, we are as a program, we are focusing on delivering an incremental delivery of the program. That is the intention. It is named as a program increment. Once the PI planning is done, the teams, each team will come up with their own team level backlog and they will be taken into the actual implementation. So throughout the implementation, we will be making use of this continuous delivery pipeline concept. So uh, the concepts are defined as like continuous exploration, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and release on demand. Continuous exploration. Throughout the program increment, the release train, uh, the teams as part of the release train, as well as the organization has to keep on doing the exploration of what's working, what's not working, and what is expected from the end users and how we can take it from the implementation perspective and what is the different phase, different approaches, different perspectives, we can do the actual implementation as well. So that is coming as part of the continuous exploration and it is a continuous process which will be happening through the program increment. It is not a one-time implementation. It is not a one-time exploration. Then the continuous integration. The continuous integration here is talking about not only the team level, user story level, sprint level integration, but the continuous integration is about bringing in the whole code base of all the teams, all the, all the sprints code base into a common integrated version and making sure the code is ready to be deployed to the production. Right? That is what the focus of the continuous integration topic from the scale agile implementation perspective. Then comes the continuous deployment where the code base which is already integrated and ready for the deployment will be deployed to the production and it is kept ready. When we say the continuous deployment to release to production, it might not be or it won't be released to your production. It won't be made available to the end users immediately. And each organization has their own timelines, their own marketing strategies, their own guidelines, their own perspectives where they want to make the code released to the customers. That is where the release on demand concept is coming into consideration. As we see, the release on demand is mapped across the sprints across the program increment, across the implementation, which means indirectly the scale agile team is highlighting that the release could be done any number of times, any point of time, and it might not be, need not, it should not be only towards end of the program increment or towards end of the sprint or towards end of the quarter or any time as such. The release can be happening any number of times, any point of time as well. So if in case we want to have that release on demand made available, we need to focus on the continuous integration and continuous deployment as well. Without which the release on demand might be a tough from the implementation perspective. So these are the four key components of the continuous delivery pipeline, CDP in the short form. And again, it is not a sequential implementation approach. As you can see, the continuous exploration, integration, and deployment, continuous deployment, as well as the release, will be happening through the sprints or through the iterations from the scale agile implementation perspective. Okay, that is about the continuous delivery pipeline.
And then towards the right side, we have the solution along with the solution context defined. What is the solution or the solution context? As we discussed initially, the whole release line is built up or defined with uh, taking the concept of whole release line. All the teams of the Agile release line will be focused on delivering a common solution, common implementation. So there is a solution. Once the customer centricity, once we start with the customer centricity, understanding the requirements and their expectations by making use of the design thinking concepts, we will be coming up with a program backlog within which we'll be prioritizing the features using the WSGF, weighted shortage of first prioritization technique. And we will take it to the PI planning where the teams come up with their plan along with the dependencies, risks and impediments identified. And once the implementation execution is started, the teams this time will be taking going through the continuous delivery pipeline where the continuous exploration, integration, deployment and release on demand will be happening on a regular, constant, continuous basis. Once throughout the implementation, we'll be focused on delivering the solution to the end users by taking the solution context into consideration. There is an overall end-to-end -end prospect of the Agile release line, starting from identifying the requirements to the deployment, to the release, to the production. Throughout this process, we will be focusing on making sure the DevOps who will be helping us from the uh, CI/CD pipeline, from the integration, from the deployment, from the release perspective. Along with the DevOps, recently we included the security aspects as well. As the requirements, as the expectations are changing, we need to start focusing on the security aspects as well. So not only the development and operations working together, we need to ensure the security aspects is also taken care of throughout the implementation. Throughout this process, the main intention is to focus on built-in quality, how the teams, how the Agile release line, how the program level, we are focusing on bringing in the quality, not only the implementation, not only the execution perspective, it is starting from the defining, identifying the requirements perspective. That is where we are again bringing up the customer centricity, design thinking concepts of how we are understanding the end user's expectations first and defining the features and prioritizing the features accordingly. And that is where the quality is taken care of from the beginning, from the defining stage itself. Then comes the vision, the roadmap, which will help as a guidance factor from the release line perspective. And as you can see, these came out of the essential configuration of this came out of the release line. The reason these vision and the roadmap could be common from the organization, from the implementation perspective. The same is the case with the system team as well. The system team is like a shared service team who would be helping one or more agile release lines or across the organization perspective. That's the reason they are identified or they are defined as a separate entity outside the essential configuration. This is the how we can read, we can uh, try to understand the essential configuration from the implementation perspective. Once one agile release line is successfully implemented, we will be moving ahead to the next steps of launching the next set of release lines, which we'll be talking in the subsequent topics. Thanks for taking your time watching this video. Have a nice day.